Good morning and welcome back to another Living Branch with me, Pastor Stafford L. Moore Jr. We want to thank all of you for tuning in once again to be with us on our platform, The Living Branch, that we come with every Sunday morning right here directly to you on Facebook and YouTube. As you know, today is a special day. Today is what we call Easter, but what we like to call Resurrection Sunday, uh, reflecting on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, how he displayed this great love for us, how he brought us into relationship, brought us back into to connection and fellowship uh, with our Father. And I want to deal with that fellowship. The title of this message is Fellowship Through His Cross. And I want to deal with it three ways. Fellowship through friendship, brotherhood, and sonship. We're going to start in the book of John chapter 15 verse 13 where Jesus says, Greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friend. We're going to start with that friendship as we deal with this topic, fellowship through his cross. So turn there, John 15, verse 13, and I will be back at the conclusion to wrap things up. Till then, stay tuned. Good morning, and welcome to another Living Branch with Pastor Stafford L. Moore, Jr. Stay tuned. Amen. If you would, turn your books to the book of John, chapter 15, and rest your finger at the 13th verse. I want to welcome you all back to another uh, living branch with me, Pastor Stafford L. Moore Jr., and the entire uh, Mount Moriah family. We just appreciate the fact that you have, choose, have chosen to be with us on this Sunday morning, this particular Sunday morning, what we like to call Resurrection Sunday. I know we uh, say Easter across this great nation, but I like to say resurrection because he rose on this day. He, he got up out the grave with all victory and power in his hands. So we want to recognize that. We want to remember that and reflect on that. Across this great nation, many churches, the church body as a whole is reflecting on the life, death, and resurrection of his son. Yes, it's uniquely done because we're not in person. We're doing this uh, uh, over the airways, over the internet, through these streaming services. But we are here, we're together, and we just thank you for tuning in. But um, hold your word up high and repeat after me. Say, this is the word. Let it revelate, let it open the minds of those who read up on its pages. Let's go to the throne. Lord, we just thank you for another opportunity to be before your people. God, as we prepare to uh, uh, go into your word, God, we ask you to remove all flesh out of your sight. God, give me clarity of thought to present what you have given us for this Resurrection Sunday. God, as we prepare to break bread, as we prepare to reflect on your son, uh, the life of Jesus Christ and what he done for us via his cross, God, allow this word to penetrate our hearts and our minds, uh, uh, encourage our spirits as we run after you, as we, as we um, grow in you and our understanding of you, God, be with us. And we just ask you to continue to equip us with the truth, empower us with your spirit. And we ask all this in your son, Jesus' name, we pray. Everyone say, amen. So, of course, this is Resurrection Sunday. And, you know, across uh, this great nation, all the church body is lifting up and reflecting on the life and the death and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Some are doing it via plays. Some are uh, uh, having different activities uh, put together to reflect on what he done, our Savior and the life that he lived, how he walked and how he taught and how he instructed and then how he healed, how he helped, how he aided in uh, uh, our lives, taking on humanity. We're going to deal with that a little bit. And, you know, and dealing with all those different things. But I want to come from a particular place 
in a particular uh, way this morning. Um, I know we deal with his cross, but I want to deal with what his cross gained us. Amen. What Christ did on the cross and what that gained us. The title of this message is Fellowship Through His Cross. Fellowship Through His Cross. Subtitle is Friendship, Brotherhood, Sonship. Amen. Friendship, Brotherhood, Sonship. So I told you to turn over to the book of John, chapter 15. So turn over there. I don't want to keep y'all too long this morning because I know that y'all got some activities set up, you know, on this day. And I know I got some things I got to go to on this day. So I want to give y'all ample time to get out and get to uh, those different events set up to, whether it's dinner or just family getting together on this great and lovely day. I want to give y'all time to get there. So John 15 and 13 and we're going to read it says, greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friends. 14, if you are my friends, you are my friends if you do what I command you. Then it says, no longer do I call you servant, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. So the first aspect of the fellowship that we gained from Christ and the cross that he carried and the life that he gave, how he gave his life. They didn't take it. I said this many times. They did not take his life. He gave his life. They could not kill the Christos. They could not kill the Messiah. They could not kill jo uh, Jesus. They could not kill Yahshua or Joshua. They could not kill him. They couldn't kill Emmanuel, God with us. He willfully gave up his life. But he says, no greater love can be displayed than one give his life for his friends. Then he said, I no longer call you servant, I call you friend, because I have revealed what my father has revealed to me, I have made known to you. So the first thing we're going to deal with is friendship. Christ, in this fellowship through his cross, called us friends. We sing the song, I am a friend of God. But Christ literally called us friends. The intimacy, the togetherness and closeness that Christ experienced with his disciples, which led him to reveal certain things to them. They asked him questions about the end times. They asked him questions about this and that. He walked with them. He talked with them. He communed with them. He's, they suffered alongside him. When he went to pray and he was praying about God removing the cup of the cross, it was his friends that was there with him. He took his inner circle with him. And that's a beautiful thing because through, his fellow, through the fellowship of his cross or through the death and, and the life that he gave on the cross and that fellowship that we gained, one aspect of that fellowship that we gained is we can say that we are friends with him. If you walk with him, if you talk with him, if you follow his instructions, you can claim and believe and know that you are a friend of God and he calls you friend. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, God calls me friend. He calls us friend. Amen. I think about Abraham uh, in the situation with Sodom and Gomorrah and, his, uh, and Lot and how God said to his companions, Shall I reveal or shall I hide or keep from him what I'm about to do? Jesus just said, I have not kept anything that my father has told me. I have shared it with you. I made it known to you because you are my friend. I don't call you servant no more because a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. So <laughs> that's a good thing. We know what our uh, 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 our father is doing. We know what God is doing because we are a friend. 
We have relationship with him. We have fellowship with him. Because of the blood that was shed on the cross, we have fellowship with Christ. And he calls us friends. He calls you friend. And if you know anything about a friend, you don't withhold much from your friend. I got a good friend. We talk about just about everything. Amen. We, some of our most deep uh, 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 secrets, some of, uh, some of our deepest uh, um, private matters, we share these things with one another, trusting and knowing that I can trust him with this information, and he can trust me with this information. We share a relationship. And I call him friend. I don't call everybody friend. I've said this many times before. I don't call everybody friend. So that lets you know when Jesus said that to his disciples, this was a very intimate thing. He called them friends. So in the first thought of this message, fellowship through his cross, the first fellowship that we experienced with him was the fact that he called us friends. You can rest assured and, and, and rest your hat on this day as you reflect on what Christ did by the cross. How he brought you in, it was because he knew you as friend. And we are coming to know him. He, he said, uh, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. What was that joy? We were that joy. He knew that down the road, later on, generations later, he would come into friendship with me. He would come into friendship with you. You would be coming into an intimate relationship with him. And he would begin to reveal things to you through the Holy Spirit. Where you begin to understand and know things because he is not hiding anything from you. He is making things known to you. Why? Because y'all all are friends. Ooh, that's a good thing. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm a friend of God. Amen. So that's one aspect of how Christ and the fellowship that he gained for us uh, by the cross is in the form of friendship. We have friendship with God. We're not just associates. We're just not acquaintances. We're just not someone they kind of know or know of. No, we know him. He knows us. And he calls us friend. Amen. Let's, let's continue this. The second thing I want to deal with, because like I said, I don't want to keep you here forever on this morning. As we reflect on the life, death, and burial of our, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior is brotherhood. This is the second aspect of fellowship that we gain by his cross is that of brotherhood. Let's go over to the book of Hebrews chapter 2 and verse your finger at the 16th verse. Amen. Brotherhood. It says, for surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham Therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make petition, uh, propitiation, I mean, uh, for the sins of the people. Look at verse 16 again. It says, for surely it is not angels that he helps. But he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in every aspect. Woo, look at your neighbor and say, he called me brother. He called you sister. He said, I did not come like the angels, and I didn't come to help the angels. <laughs> That's so, it says the angels desire to look into the matters of man. What is man that thou art so mindful of him that you visit him, that you think of him, that you consider him? He said, I didn't come to help the angels, but look what he told us. He said, I will not leave you helpless. I will not leave you without a comforter. And we're going to deal with it a little bit later. I will not leave you as orphans. 
I will send a helper. He came to help us because we are his brothers. So he said, we did, I didn't come like the angels, but I had to come in the likeness of my brothers in every respect. So he called us brothers when he took on humanity. As our savior, he considered us brothers. Amen. Now that speaks to something. Because you can look at this from two aspects. We're going to deal with this brotherhood. We're going to deal with it from a physical related brother. Like I have two brothers. They are my blood brothers through my parents' union. I have a brother by the name of Octavius and I have a brother by the, an older brother by the name of Kenya. Them are my brothers because we are from the same source. <laughs> My mom and my dad came together, and through their union, they produced three beautiful, handsome sons. I'm, I'm, I don't, let, me, let me stop. Let me stop messing on this day. But through their union, they produced three sons, Kenya, Stafford, and, and Octavius. And we are blood-related. Mm, this sounds good to me. So through that blood connection, I am his brother. No matter where he go, I am blood related to him. We are connected via the blood. You see what I'm saying, right? Now, we know that it is the blood of Christ that has brought us into this fellowship because of the blood that he shed on the cross. Through that spilling of his blood, he brought us together as brothers and sisters in Christ. We are one in Christ through the Holy Spirit, and the, that connection is like my brothers and the blood that we share from our parents. So we are brothers spiritually through the blood of Christ, but then he goes a step farther. Just like my parents came together in, in holy matrimony and marriage, and through marriage they created three sons and created a family, we have a brotherhood because through Christ and the death on his cross and the resurrection that he stepped out the grave, through that uh, uh, event, we are now family in Christ. He has brought us together. We talked about that over in Ephesians where he brought both Gentile and Jew together and removed the walls of hostility and brought them together as one. In Christ, one body, one family, one church, with Christ being the head. We are, we have a brotherhood, we have a sisterhood, we are a family because of his blood, what he did through the, because of the cross and the fellowship that we gained through his cross. We are brothers. So not only are we friends of Christ, we are brothers in Christ. Hello, this is Pastor Stafford Moore, and I want to personally thank all of you that have been supporting us on this platform, The Living Branch. Many of you have followed us on our Facebook page, and you faithfully watch The Living Branch every time we post. Some of you are even following us and subscribe to us on YouTube, and you faithfully follow us there as well. Others are following us on Anchor via our podcast, The Living Branch, and it has been a blessing. But I know a few of you, and maybe many of you, want to go a step beyond that and support us financially. So what we have done is created a cash app at dollar sign the living branch. That's cash app at dollar sign the living branch. If you want to be a blessing, if you want to support the ministry financially, please go there and whatever the Lord has commissioned your heart to give, we will much appreciate it. This will help us continue to supply the equipment and the many things needed to make this happen. God has been really good. God has been really kind and gracious. So um, we look forward to what God is going to do and continue to do for this platform. So if you want to be a help, you want to be an aid financially, go to cash app dollar sign the living branch and we will utilize whatever you give to the glory of god be blessed family in christ let's look at that again i just want to touch on that one more time therefore he had to be made like his brothers in every respect like his brothers <laughs> 
So we family. That's why you can say you are joint heirs with Christ. Heirs and joint heirs. Now we have access to the Father, which we go on next. And then we have inheritance as sons, as daughters, we receive an inheritance because Christ is our brother. Christ has brought us into his family. He came likened his brothers, likened to his brothers in every respect. He took on humanity. He didn't come as an angel. He didn't come as a lion. He didn't come as a, 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 any of those things. He took on humanity. And it says he came... He had to be made like his brothers in every respect. He was a human being with all the limitations and all the issues and all the struggles and all the pains and all the ailments and all the hurt that humans go to. He had to go to the restroom. He had to sleep. He had to eat. He had to experience it in all the respects that we experienced it. We experience it. He had a heart. He had blood pumping through his heart. Amen. And that blood that was spilt when they pierced him in his side is why we can be called brothers. He came like his brothers. He took on humanity as the second Adam. By the first Adam, we was launched into sin. By the second Adam, we come out through him and faith in him. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, we have brotherhood due, due to the fellowship of his cross. Amen. Let's continue. And the last one on this Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday, we have sonship. Yes, we have sonship. Go to Galatians, the book of Galatians, sonship, the book of Galatians. I should have stayed up here so I didn't have to walk. Galatians 4, verse 4. Now let's read 4 through 5. It says, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. Let's continue. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, I by father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. So, at the appointed time, the day when we're celebrating, that the life that we're celebrating, at the appointed time, God sent Jesus, God sent the Emmanuel, God sent Yahshua or Joshua at the appointed time. Amen. That through him and his act on the cross, his love, his, this great love that he, he talked about earlier. There is no greater love than one lay down his life for his friend. This great love uh, that he was going to display to redeem those under the law so that we might, be, might receive adoption as sons. So those that was under the law and then extended to those who didn't even know the law to become sons. Well, y'all better be thankful for this, this, this Lord that we serve. Y'all should be thankful for Jesus Christ on this day. That's why we remember this, because we have sonship. You can be called son. You are a daughter. Look at what it says. I want to focus on this again. It says, uh, uh, to redeem, verse 5, to redeem those who were under the law so that, they, that we might receive adoption as sons. Six, and because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Look at this. We read uh, uh, last week, we talked about a few weeks ago, he said, I will not leave you uh, comfortless. I will pray to the Father that he sends another. 
Then he goes on to say, I will not leave you as orphans in other translations, but I will come to you. And you see him, he says, you see him, this comforter, this, this, this other one, you see him for he dwells with you and he will be in you. The spirit of his son is in us. And that spirit cries, Abba, Father. Why? Because that spirit identifies us as sons, us as daughters. So you are no longer a slave. What did Jesus say? I no longer call you servant. I call you friend. Over here it says, Paul said, you are no longer a slave, but you are a son. And if you are a son, then you are an heir. So we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. We are heirs through God. We are friends of Christ. No longer servants, no longer slaves, but son, friend, brother, family. Why? Through the fellowship of his cross, through the love that he displayed when he chose to go up Calvary Hill and allow creation to, to uh, beat him and allow to creation to mishandle him and allow creation to pierce him in his side and his blood uh, spilled to the ground signifying the covering of our sins signifying the death of the innocent one the lamb that was shed for all of us so that we can have fellowship and full access to the God that created all things Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there is no greater love than this. Just like Jesus said to his friends, no greater love can be displayed than one lays down his life for his friends. We have relationship. This is a relational uh, uh, experience. We know him Because we are known by him and he reveals himself to us. He does not hide himself. He reveals himself. He opens up. He makes things understood. The mysteries are explained to those he calls friends. Those that are his brothers. Those that are sons. Those that are daughters. Those that are family at the body. As the body of Christ. We have fellowship. And that's what we reflect on. On this resurrection Sunday. The fact that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, took on humanity as our brothers, walked with us as friends, introduced us to his father. (laughs) Now we're sons with full access to him having an inheritance, something to look forward to that we're going to receive from him. And this is the great love. So in my close, as you reflect on this Sunday, think about that. The fellowship that we have through his cross, friendship, brotherhood, sonship. These are the aspects of that fellowship that we have as the body of Christ. He has brought us together under the head of his son through one spirit his holy spirit that connects us like the blood connects a family uh, uh, together from that mother and that father and the blood that came together and formed in the womb of the mother and produced a child whether it's a, a, a girl or a boy that then, then more children are produced and then a family comes into fruition and, and is birth Christ birth a family of brothers and sisters and friends with friendship and and love and intimacy and relationship and communion and union and oneness through his spirit the Holy Spirit and that Holy Spirit causes us to cry out and call to our Father. I pray that that bless you this morning. I pray that you got something out of it as you reflect on this day 
Just think about that. What it took for this God to send his only begotten son to die. The love of that act. We got the full uh, 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 benefit, the privilege and joy uh, to look on and, and reflect on and remember what was done for us. And not everybody understand this. Not everybody understand this, but we have fellowship through his cross. Friendship, brotherhood, and sonship. Amen. I pray that that uh, blessed you this morning. I pray that you got something out of that on this Resurrection Sunday. Fellowship through his cross. If it wasn't for Jesus, we would not have fellowship with the Father. If it wasn't for his selfless love on the cross, we would not have access to him. And through that fellowship, he called us friends. We found out through that fellowship that he called us brothers. And through that fellowship, we were given the power to become sons and daughters of our Father. And through the Holy Spirit, or the Spirit of the Son, the Holy Spirit, we cry out, Abba, Father. Amen. This is a beautiful thing. When we uh, celebrate Resurrection Sunday and what Christ did for us via the cross, how he gave his life, they couldn't take it. He willfully, selflessly gave his life for the joy that was set before him, for the friendship, for the fellowship, for the bond and intimacy that he would have with us. He gave his life before all creation, heaven and earth. God was redeeming it back to himself. And we have fellowship because of that cross. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you on this Resurrection Sunday for your selfless love, God. Your great love. It said no uh, greater love could be displayed than one lay down their life for their friend. Christ called us friend. Christ came as our brother. He didn't come as an angel. But he came in the, in, in the form of a man taking on humanity as our brother brother and now we are brothers and have brotherhood and we have family uh and, and 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 are brought into his family into his kingdom as sons and as daughters and then we gain sonship said you have given us the power to become the children of god uh calling us sons you will not leave us as orphans but you will come and be with us amen giving us the spirit of adoption now we can cry i by father through the spirit of the son or the holy spirit that is in us we cry out abba father we want to thank you for that because no one else could have did this for us this selfless act this 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 powerful demonstration of love could not have been brought about through uh, no other means but through the son and the person of the son jesus christ because no one was worthy no one was capable but he did it for us because we were his friends we was his family and he loved us and brought us back into connection, back into fellowship with you. And we thank you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, for all that he has done for us. We all say amen. I pray that you uh, was blessed this morning. Reflect on that as you go about your day, uh, thinking about what Christ has done for us and the fellowship that we have gained through the selfless act that he displayed on the cross by giving his life shedding his blood and bringing us into fellowship as friends, sons and brothers uh, and sisters uh, in the uh, family of Christ and it's just a beautiful thing, we just thank him for that um, I want to bless, send blessings your way, uh, enjoy your day, enjoy your time with your family and tune in at the same place, same time, right here on the Living Branch, till then be blessed and highly favored, see you next time